know, sometimes YouTube just like runs out of things to show me. I know there's an endless pool of content on this site and I would probably find a lot more of it entertaining besides those three comfort videos that I just watch over and over again. I'm not sure why, but the algorithm just like refuses to show me anything new and cool and exciting that people are making. And yeah, this is compounded with the fact that like I don't particularly go out and seek new content. In high stress situations, I tend to fall back on old patterns. And because of this, um, instead of discovering like new and exciting things, I tend to like rediscover my past infatuations. I took a little bit of a break, but I'm back to continue to talk about FNAF now, as well as the games and their link to a child audience and how I think that might have happened. If you haven't seen the first video, it's a while back, but there is a playlist that I'm going to be adding this video onto as well. You can check it out if you want. It covers the first game and in this video we're going to be covering the second game. The first FNAF was released exactly a year ago if editing and everything goes according to my plan. On August 8th, which also just so happens to be my grandma's birthday, in 2024, the first game was released on Steam. It did incredibly well. And after the success, Scott Koth is scheduled to release the second game Christmas Day that same year. That turnaround seems frankly insane to me. This is an indie game, so Scott was like obviously working by himself. There is very clearly a passion there. And I even mentioned how I already felt like some of this story was almost just being kept in the back of his mind without being brought to the forefront yet. And I think it's even more clear how much passion and love was behind this project when that second game came out early. FNAF 2 only came out three months after the original. And like, I'm not just talking about the demo. I'm talking about the actual like full release of the second game it was three months after the original game was released. There was new animatronics, new environments, new mechanics. And even though the game is still very similar to the first one, it's clear that there like was work that went into it. And regardless of how much of this game you could consider to be just reskinned versions of the first game, it's still an impressive amount of time to get an entire second game out there. Especially considering the fact that Scott didn't even know his first game was going to be as popular as it became. But he so easily adapted it for a sequel. A prequel, as we find out later on in the lore, but as of now, it's a sequel. And this, this, I think, is one of the biggest factors to FNAF's success. Not to get too far ahead of myself, but Scott Cawthon was running a fucking marathon. He was releasing game after game after game, even ahead of schedule most times, usually catching people off guard. He didn't let up, he did not let the internet wait to forget about FNAF and the world he had created. And I don't mean that in like a negative way. I don't think he was necessarily trying to capitalize on the like flash of fame that the internet had given him. I think he was hyped to have a project that was finally going his way. And I think that he was excited to share his creations with people. I already mentioned how I think there was always going to be more to this story than what he released in the first game. Even if it was just mostly vibes and like key points and players. And people were already clearly enjoying this environment that he was building. Not just the first game by itself, but the lore and the story and the world. Everyone had questions that he had intentionally left behind that they wanted answers to. And because of that, the second game was made. The first game is iconic, but there were some changes made to the second game that a lot of people appreciated. The whole conserving power thing for the whole building didn't exist anymore, which is now replaced with a similar concept, which would be the music box for the puppet. Something you have to keep an eye on, but it's a little bit more streamlined and you can get back your power that you need. More animatronics are added, and these animatronics seem to be more fun and kid-friendly and actually function <laughs> better than the old ones. But the old animatronics are still there just to remind you of the first game and score you some familiarity points. Personally, the second game is my least favorite, and I think that's just because there's so much to compare it to now. Back when it came out, a lot of people actually really, really liked this game. A lot of people thought it was better than the original, a lot of people considered it to be a big improvement. Being completely upfront, this game is very, very similar to the first game. With such a fast turnaround, I'm not really that surprised about this. And while a lot of people People saw a lot of improvements in the mechanics specifically, as well as how the story is told, I still prefer the first one. To me, the second game just feels like really busy, really crowded, and it just feels like a little bit of a downgrade to me. It's okay, I like it, and most people disagree with me that it's not as good as the first, but I just don't like this one. <laughs> the puppet is still sick as fuck though. <laughs> but we have the big question. Were the changes made in this game seemingly made to appeal to a younger audience? No. To be honest, I think Scott Cawthon still considers his audience to be almost completely adults at this point. From the moment that this game opens, it feels like Scott is trying to tell us that this is more than just a throwaway series. In the opening of this game, you're looking out as if you are stuffed into one of the animatronic suits, specifically Freddy. This by itself gives me more confidence that this game was not considering a child audience. However, it did convince a lot of people that this series was going places when it first released. It wouldn't have surprised me if Scott was already working on the third game at the same time as this one. These games coming out in such quick succession helped to keep FNAF in the public eye, making sure that the audience that the first game amassed didn't have 
have any time to dissipate. The questions were still fresh in everyone's mind. Scott was undoubtedly excited about how his games had taken off, and I'm sure he had even more extra ideas flowing from how excited he was. And yeah, m mostly this game is the same as the first one, but there were definitely some changes. So there's no denying that this is just the exact same story over again at this point at the game's being released. At this point in the game's being released, it's a little bit confusing about it, like exactly how many children have been murdered. Was it only five? Is it ten now that we're in a new location? There's more animatronics, so does that mean there's more child ghosts? And Phone Guy does mention the old place, which at first makes this game seem like it's a sequel, but I do think that line might get patched over at some point in the releases. The lore in this series is very confusing. However, we can see the story and the lore being built up and created in real time. Scott is like doing these changes and world building while these games are being released and through patches and updates. So the people that were sitting there trying to unpack the lore while these games were coming out were very confused a lot of the time. Things were really hard to interpret because things were changing a lot. And especially at this point in the franchise, there was never really a clear answer on anything, especially since Scott Cawthon never really answered a question very directly. Directly. However, this game has the introduction of the mini games, which are a much more direct way of explaining the lore and what's going on in these games, specifically the first game. While the core subject matter of this game is the same, this is the first time the player gets to actually experience the lore through these mini games, along with the usual weird hints from Phone Guy and like storytelling in the background elements. We also get to play from the animatronics perspective in these few like 8 bit style retro cutscenes. These games help to to explain to the player how these suits got possessed in the first place, explaining a lot of questions that people had from the first game. And with titles like Save Them and Give Gifts, Give Life, the supernatural element of FNAF as a whole becomes more and more clear through these mini games. I think the biggest jump in making the subject matter more adult is the fact that we actually see the death of a child on screen. In the Take Cake mini game, we see the purple guy committing his first murder. And then also in the Foxy Go 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 mini game, we see the corpses of five children. This is also the game where we meet the purple guy for the first time. And like I just said, we're introduced to the fact that he is the murderer. Because of all this, I don't think you can be surprised about where I'm ranking it on the kids or not for kids scale. It's basically the same as the first game. The actual true subject matter is the exact same. The change of adding more animatronics really just reads as there's more victims. If you hadn't gotten the chance to play any of the other games, which you wouldn't have at this point, this game is also the first one to hint that the murderer was an employee. So yeah, there's a little bit more to the story, but I don't think it's enough to bump it up that much more. And I think that you'll see why when we talk about our next category. The violence in this game is pretty much contained to the minigames. Like I said, in this game we see an actual murder happen on screen, there are actual dead bodies of children on screen, and on top of that we still have the same cartoonish style of violence that was present in the first game. It's not that big of a leap. The real life bits are pretty much the exact same as they were before. The player character is just sitting there in the office being hunted down by the animatronics, it's really nothing new. All of the new show of violence is shown in pixelated cutscenes. Phone Guy's lines are a little bit more direct at some point, but like not enough to make this category go any higher. It's mentioned that the yellow bunny suit was used in the murders, which gives us the information that that was probably an employee. This then asks the question if the first ship security, the security, security, this then begs the question that the first ship security guard in the first game might have been the murderer. It's also a little bit more direct about how dangerous the animatronics are and need to be kept away from people. However, the jump stairs still cut to static rather than the blood splatter that's like kind of common in later games. Mostly it's just the mini games that make that much of a difference. And between the mini games and Phone Guy's a little bit more direct lines, I definitely think this game is more intense. The fact that there even is that kind of on-screen violence at all is more than the last game had. The thing about the humor in this game is that it feels like it's a step down from the one before. The tone and the meta jokes are pretty much the same, but there seems to be less room for them in this game. They're few and far between, but in a similar style to the first game. The biggest joke and the one that everyone seems to remember the most from this game is the fact that when you get your pink slip at the end, one of the reasons it shows that you were fired for was for odor. And people remember this one because it's used as a clue later on in the like war search that happens. This franchise is legitimately insane. So I think it's safe to say that the jokes in the 
this one are not more or less sophisticated than in the last one. And they aren't truly lore, they're really just jokes, at least at this point in the franchise. Again, this kind of could be biased, since I really don't like this game very much, so I might not have found some of the jokes funny, therefore wrote them off as not a joke. <laughs> but to me, it just seems like there's no time for jokes because there's so much else going on in this game. This game is not friendly, it's not abiding. From the jump, the game has more of a sense of melancholy and dread than the original does. The animatronics might at first look more cute and friendly, but the whole vibe is just so much more sinister. Not being able to close doors to protect yourself, having that gaping wide hallway in front of you, creepy music and noises that are all around you during the minigames and the cutscenes between nights. Everything almost feels creepier than it did in the first game. There's double the amount of animatronics, so many new clues and secrets, and the animatronics that you thought were out of commission show up back to life. So yeah, the tone to me in this one does feel a little bit more adult than the last one. I think this is a good point to mention that the first round of games are just not easy. They're punishing and can be incredibly grueling to just finish the game, much less do all that extra stuff in order to get the juicy bits of lore that everyone's craving. There might have been some changes, like the power supply thing being turned over to a flashlight, the introduction of the music box, as well as so many more characters, each of which following different rules can make it more difficult for players. It's kind of the same idea from the first game where you need to work at it to win. You're expected to fail over and over and over again. The actual gameplay aspect hasn't changed that much, but at least you can actually move during the mini games. What sets this game apart and gives it a little bit of a higher score is the fact that the dread and the horror in this game just feel more intense to me. This one feels more like a horror game than the first one did. I think the villains in this game are actually grouped into like two separate categories. Just like the last game, you have animatronics with the souls of children trapped inside. These are going to be at the forefront of your mind because, well, they're the ones causing you harm, you the player character. They're the ones actively trying to kill you, and therefore they're going to be front and center in your mind. And therefore they're going to be the first thing that pops up when you think about the bad guys in FNAF 2. And while there might be more of them, they're still on the same level as FNAF 1. Sure, the decrepit robots and Mangle are very creepy, but they were honestly pretty gross in the first game already. I'm much more interested in talking about how this game finally puts a face, kind of, to the murderer, the true villain of FNAF as a whole. He's only known as the purple guy at this point, but we finally have our true bad guy, the actual evil that's causing all this to happen. Our very first glimpse at Michael Apton is him cloaked in shadow, which is what the purple is supposed to represent for those of you who don't know. Outside the window of the pizzeria, meeting an actual murder. He doesn't really pose any threat to the player character though, not in this game at least. Instead, we start to get hints that this is why the animatronics are behaving this way. The pieces are starting to come together about this story and how much it revolves around the mysterious figure that doesn't get named until, I think, like, sister location. The animatronics and the souls that inhabit them haven't really stepped up and down in level. They're pretty much the exact same as they were in the first game. But with the introduction of Purple Guy and having him actually commit a murder on screen, I think this is what's gonna bump this section up a little bit higher than the previous game. Instead of the child murder kind of being a vague concept that we get hints at, it's an active threat that we see happening. As as well as seeing the true villain doing those crimes. Since this game and the original are so similar, this section is going to be pretty short. There's pretty much no substantial change between the player character in this game and the last game, which is even more interesting considering the lore, but this isn't a lore video, so don't worry about that. But yeah, so all of my points from the first video are going to be pretty much the same points I would make here. He's just a guy trying to make a living wage. He's just being scared completely out of his mind every single night. He's not getting paid enough for this shit. You guys get the picture. Like I said last time, I bring up the main character specifically because there are some other games in the series where I feel like it's specific specifically meant to draw in a younger audience, which is kind of the only reason I'm bringing it up now. But as for this game, FNAF 2, I'm just going to give it the exact same score I gave FNAF 1. So I've already mentioned, I just don't particularly like this game. The general consensus when this game came out is that it was a much bigger improvement than the original and everyone thought it was like absolutely amazing. I mean, at that time, it was the first time anyone had been able to see Purple Guy or had gotten to play mini games that were being so direct with their lore and story building. So I can see why people were excited in the developments of the franchise. Not to mention that the time this game came out, everyone was super excited for it. And I do think that I like the original game because it is a little bit tinted with nostalgia. However, from a 
perspective lens, the second game is just completely forgettable to me. In fact, it's so forgettable that while I was writing the script on my plane ride to Japan, I got this game and the third game confused and wound up having to almost completely rewrite this script from the ground up. I had a bunch of notes about the mini games and Purple Guy and a lot of like that kind of stuff that actually ended up happening in the third game that I thought happened in this game and I was just kind of like misremembering where it happened in the game timeline. I had to go back and rework so much for the script and it took a very long time and I ended up getting like kind of a bit disheartened. <laughs> and between that and like my kidney stones and my root canal as well as like a bunch of mysterious liquid floating around my body and like so many doctor's appointments and now I've had to start <laughs> a second job because this economy is going up in flames faster than long grass doused in gasoline in the middle of a Texas drought. Yeah it took me a little bit to get this uh, script completed but that's enough of the horrors of being alive. This video is finally done. It has been a very long time since I recorded the first video which could explain why my rating scale is a lot higher on this game than I expected it to be. I feel like a lot of other games in the franchise are way worse than this one. I still feel like I gave every section a fair rating but in the end this game as a whole just seems to have a higher rating than I was expecting. I mean all I did was like average the numbers. I mean overall I don't think anybody's gonna try and argue with me that this game is more kid friendly than the original. I think it's less kid friendly but that's just my opinion. At this point in the franchise at least the games are not trying to draw in young crowds. I hope you all enjoyed watching this video. We only have like a million more <laughs> videos to make because there's so many goddamn games in this franchise and they're still coming out. But yeah so I'd have to say FNAF 2 is actually my least favorite game in this franchise. Actually now that I think about it I didn't ever play that one game that isn't canon anymore because it was so bad. Maybe I'll change my mind after I play that game. As of now FNAF 2 is my least favorite game but anyway that's gonna be it from me today. I hope you all enjoyed watching this video. I hope you guys are having fun recapping FNAF with me and I will see you all in the next one. Bye.